Just a Concerned Citizen by Dalmos on AO3. Chapter 19. Guidance. Things got better, got worse, and then ever so slowly started to get better again. Maybe even better than ever. Sleeping in Atoshi's apartment, their apartment, didn't turn out to be as awkward as Izuku had built it up to be in his head. The hero first introduced him to Shithead, who didn't even acknowledge his presence, and who had swatted at Hitoshi's attempts to pet her behind ears. This is so sad. Hitoshi shook his head in mock betrayal. What did Hanta even do to you? Before turning to Izuku and saying, Don't let her attitude fool you. If you sleep with your door open, you'll probably wake up with her on your chest. Immediately after, he was shown to what was going to be his room. Hitoshi pulled on a futon from the closet to air out, saying, I think if I were more chivalrous, I'd offer to sleep on the couch while you took my bed. But since you're not technically a guest, that would be kind of weird. I have it on good authority that the couch is comfortable, though. Izuku forced himself to put all thoughts of Hitoshi's bed aside to think about later. He laughed and hoped it didn't sound as nervous as he thought it did. I'll probably have to go out and buy new furniture. I can't imagine I'm still welcome at my own place. At Hitoshi's frown, he just shrugged. It was already pretty cheap. It's fine. Sure, if he wanted to, he could probably get into a whole fight over eviction laws and renters' rights, but his desire to do any of that was as astronomically zero. Hitoshi seemed to pick up on that, or maybe just the fact that he was still exhausted from the interrogation he had just been a part of on top of the poor quality of sleep in the hospital, so he let it drop with a, well, you can go pick up new stuff once you get your paycheck tomorrow, yeah? And that ended up being an event on its own. Hitoshi had both done them face masks and beanies as they rolled the train, only to walk to what appeared to be a very normal office building. And not the normal on the outside, clearly a front for something on the outside kind of office building. Hitoshi led them through a rather curious path of hallways to keep out of everyone's way because they were actually working. The office they ended up was tiny and out of the way, covered with yellow wallpaper and safety posters. The man at the desk inside didn't greet them. He just looked at them behind the rim of his glasses and said, Well, give me some ID then. When the man took it from him, Izuku noted that he made a point to brush their fingers together. But he did it to Itoshi too, and the purple-haired man didn't seem to react, so Izuku was just going to follow his lead. He'd be lying if he said he hadn't hoped for some secret passage to high-tech lair to open up. But the man just sighed, nodded, and started to shuffle through the paperwork on his desk. Mind Jack, you're getting the normal plus a week paid leave. I was only there a few hours. Is the whole week really necessary? Both Izuku and the man at the desk raised their eyebrows at Itoshi's arguing. Though Izuku was more in surprise while the man's standard procedure, feel free to argue with it if you want, but not with me. I might. Hitoshi crossed his arms, almost childishly, only to uncross them and sigh a moment later as he gave up the fight. He might have glanced at Izuku before he did which raised questions that he had no way of answering. As for you, he turned to Izuku. Congratulations on your promotion. A new bundle of paperwork was placed in his hands. Your leave is two weeks. Any questions? Many, actually. Too many to figure out which ones were important to ask. Um, thank you? He drew up completely short when he glanced down at the papers in his hand and saw the check on top. The check for more money than he'd ever had in his entire life. Uh... He couldn't even attempt to lower the register of his voice. Shocked as he was. Was this some kind of test or something? I think you gave me too much money. Hitoshi peered over his shoulder a little and tilted his head. No, that seems about right. Izuku had no idea what emotion he was feeling right now, and so had defaulted to being overwhelmed. I thought you said that it wouldn't be a lot. Well, 
Satoshi. I think I also said payable per case completed. And I'm pretty sure that check includes things you solved for us before you were actually working here. At half the intern rate, the man behind the desk added, as an incentive to retain talented analysis. But I... He had to stop talking, or he was going to start crying again. Okay. At least he wasn't going to have to worry about affording furniture, which was exactly where Itoshi took him afterwards, and was significantly less stressful, because despite the windfall, Izuku just picked out the cheapest things anyways. Hitoshi had shrugged and said it was his room to do as he wanted. Then he said that even if the bed frame was cheap, Izuku might want to splurge a bit on the mattress. And again, that had Izuku's mind going places about Hitoshi and beds that he knew weren't being implied. So he turned his brain off and bought a higher-end one like he suggested him to. Somewhere along the way, Hitoshi slipped off to get them lunch, and when Isuku spluttered in protest, he smiled a grin that was probably meant to be unsettling, but which Isuku found a little too endearing to be safe. What? Am I not allowed to celebrate my friend getting a promotion? Isuku's lips wobbled, and he turned his face into his lunch to hide it. He supposed that if he were more dramatic, that friend could have hurt his pining heart. But to be honest, he was just floored to even be that. I still owe you and Shoto a celebration dinner. I'm gonna be in charge of that. Itoshi rolled his eyes, though it seemed to be in good nature. Ugh, fine. I guess I can't actually force you to keep that nosy asshole out of the apartment. He didn't realize until later that his only real way to contact Shota was through email, and using it to invite him to dinner seemed kind of strange. He did it, though, because he promised, and when he said he had done as much as Hitoshi had said they had, they had to invite Tokuyami as well. The former had shown up with Tokuyari, and the latter with cupcakes, and that had led Hitoshi complaining that he would have done something if he had known it was a potluck. Still, it was nice, real nice, if not a little bittersweet, because Izuku had never done anything like it before and he wasn't wholly convinced that he'd get to do it again. At some point during the night, between talking about cat adoptions and promotions, Shoto had looked at him and raised an eyebrow and asked if he thought any more about becoming a hero and had shared a look with Itoshi who'd gave him the tiny, soft smile that was going to haunt him for his days, and said they were working on it. Unfortunately, that's when things started to get worse. The night after everyone had gone, he called his mom again, like he said he would, only to end up in a stilted conversation where neither of them knew what to say. He didn't want to mention his new job, because he signed NDAs, and she was probably going to imagine the worst anyways. He tentatively said that he moved to a new apartment, one that was in an even safer part of town, and she sakily responded that it sounded nice before falling quiet again. To his surprise, she didn't beg him to stop, or reconsider, or even come visit. She didn't seem to have much of anything to say at all, except that she hoped he was doing well, and to be honest with her, lack of comment probably spiraled him further into second-guessing himself than any lecture could have. The next day, Hitoshi called him over to look at a therapist's office. It was a good idea, a necessary one. He knew that. That didn't stop him from coming home from the session more exhausted than he'd ever been while literally running for his life. The therapist he picked was a lovely woman, and Izuku liked her a lot, but talking to her served as a constant reminder that no, things shouldn't have happened to you. The world is fucked up and hates you, and all you really can do is try and cope. She talked a lot about finding self-confidence. He was trying, and peers to support him. He did have some now. They were heroes, but if that's what he was trying to become, and valuing his life as much as everyone else, which was kind of the hard one. For the first week, 
while he was also on leave. Hitoshi acted as a sort of pillar, a familiar face and reminder that no, the world wasn't all bad, that at least one person cared enough to pay attention. Though he was so emotionally wrung out, and when he'd spotted the man trying to write up a hero training plan, he'd burst into tears and had insisted that he was fine. The second week was harder, since he wasn't supposed to work. Not that he let that stop him, exactly. He just had a lot of things to send in once he'd officially started. He spent a lot of time moping around, his poor sleep schedule making an immediate return. Though that did leave him awake when Hitoshi returned from patrols. And, well, Hitoshi was working hard. Izuku was trying to get better. Sitting around and feeling sorry for himself wasn't exactly what he was trying to do. Not anymore. He might not be able to do much yet. But if waiting around to greet his roommate after work with a cup of coffee counted as helping, he might as well, right? Sent. Do you happen to have any hero training lessons plans laying around I could take a look at? From Dad. I'm surprised a rat got you so quickly. Sent. What? From Dad. Hmm. Ignore that. I think I have some things I could send over. Hitoshi didn't tend to be dramatic about his own feelings. Usually, if they were inconvenient, he was pretty good at squashing them down and ignoring them until they went away, or at least until he figured out how to cope with them and get on with his life. He had hoped that maybe the extending and prolonged contact he was now having with his crush would help him get over it, or at least learn how to live with it. Neither of those things had happened. No. Izuku being a new constant in his life had made things unbearably, beautifully worse. He didn't use that phrase lightly, but Hitoshi was pretty sure he was in love. And it was sort of a huge problem. As Izuku settled down and got into a rhythm with work, he seemed to grow less nervous. That spark in his eyes that Hitoshi had wanted to see again so badly was showing up more with each passing day, in each solved case, he seemed less flustered around Hitoshi, too, which was good. The moments where he'd smark something at Izuku and Izuku would just roll his eyes and smark back were often the highlight of his day. Fuck's sake. Izuku made it a point to be around him on his rare days off, so they could hang out and not spend the whole day sleeping. If anyone had asked Hitoshi before if he thought he would have enjoyed work science documents, or weird science fiction anime, the answer would have been a resounding, I don't know. But now, he did know. He liked those things, and he especially liked the way Izuku lit up when he talked about them. Really, everything had gone exactly how he hoped it would, which made the fact that he put himself in this situation much worse. Sure, they put the, I'm in charge and protecting your life, part of the relationship behind them, only to move on to a, now I'm responsible for making sure you can achieve your dreams. There was still the whole hero and civilian dynamic to worry about, too. Not to mention the whole roommate thing. Far too many reasons for Izuku to feel pressured into doing things he might not otherwise want to. Plus, his own irrational fear that if he did confess anything, he'd be accused of manipulating Izuku closer to him from the start. It was ridiculous, but so were most of the things that plagued his mind on sleepless nights. The fact that he'd often get home from patrols to find Izuku waiting for him was not helping things. He just prayed that Izuku hadn't noticed his stupid lovesick stares, because he'd caught himself doing that far, far too often. So that meant he was left trying to fix the two problems, and hopefully that would make the third less of an issue. Izuku would have to learn how to fight, firstly, and if there was one thing he was more qualified to teach than most other heroes, it was how to fight quirkless. But there was also generic physical conditioning that had to be done too, and he knew just enough about that to know handing Izuku his own workout plan and telling him to go at it probably wouldn't work out the best. And there was the whole rescue heroics thing that he barely remembered anything about. 
so he might as well re-up himself on that if Izuku was going to be learning that anyways. Point being, he was quickly coming to the conclusion that he wasn't going to be able to do all of this on his own. Class A group chat. Please do not change this. Tired TM. Alright team. Who wants to volunteer to help train someone be a hero? Pikachu 2. Someone? Sexy or seen more? Someone? Smiley face, smiley face. Tired TM. I mean, it's the concerned citizen. I know you're all nosy enough to figure that out. Basically, I think anything you can offer right now. Advice, sparring, lessons, whatever. I'm kind of just working with what I've got, which, as you all know, isn't much. Government assigned pun name. I already offered the use of my agency's gym, and that offer still stands. I suppose I could also offer myself as a sparring partner for practice against a long-range quirk. Spaced out. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, this is so cool, I'm in. I think in order to get the full license, you have to prove a certain amount of disaster training, which luckily for you, I am credited to give as of later this week. Sue too, smiley face. Obviously, I also want to spar, though are you kidding me? I've gotta know what this guy's moves are. Sexier Cenomorph. Yeah, you guys are totally free to use my studio space if you need. Also, I want to spar. Tired TM. Alright, hold on. Anyone else who wants to spar, just say A. Ultimate Flying Paper. A. Can't believe this is happening. I like big beats. A. Pikachu 2. A. LMAO. Blank. A. Frog. A. Tired TM. Well, fuck. Alright, I guess that's covered. Ingenium. Are you certain this is the wisest idea? Were you not concerned that this person was involved with criminals? Tired TM. And I confirmed they're not. Ingenium. I see. Well, I'm interested as well then. Team Ida 10 is known for having many non traditional heroes in its ranks, so I'm sure I have something to offer. Tired TM. Nice. Die. Hold the fuck up. Are you all insane? Do you all understand that you're going to get him killed by letting him do this? Tired TM. Oh, I was wondering where you were. Look, just read this carefully. I'm not going to repeat myself. He's going to do this. Him being prepared is how he stays alive. He had learned his lesson immediately, after Izuku had learned his first lesson on rescue heroics with Zuraka. He had left them about halfway through to go on his patrol only to pass her on his way back home. She had waved and smiled at him, and it took him a few minutes to realize, with dawning horror, that she had been coming from the apartment. Izuku was social. It was going to be like living with Hanta all over again. Between her, Shoda, and Tokoyami, the apartment now had a constant stream of guests that he really wasn't used to. He could never actually find it in himself to really complain about it, though. Perhaps worst of all was that, after they had a long conversation where Izuku outlined all the ways that he had never actually broken the law, he became fast friends with Ida, too. And that was more than a little frightening. Ida played the rule-abiding stickler, and he was, but he had no problem using loopholes where he found them, so pulling him next to Izuku was a legal nightmare waiting to happen. But ever so slowly, and with a lot of help, things went. Izuku was just as fast as a learner as Satoshi expected him to be, and it was more than a little amusing to see everyone who had showed up to spar realize just how dangerous Izuku's mind could be. He was making quick progress in quirkless fighting. The first time Izuku had pinned him might have left them both red in the face, and Itoshi horribly frustrated with the fact that he still couldn't say anything. And when Izuku sparred against his former classmates, as they all used their quirks, it seemed like he always found some new weakness to exploit. He couldn't quite go head-on against Todoroki. Not many people could. But he figured out the trick to avoiding getting encased in ice was to keep moving, which had put him ahead of most. The moment where he punched Kaminari hard in the chest and caused him to short-circuit in a way that he hadn't since high school had been equal parts terrifying and hilarious. 
Izuku had apologized for five minutes straight. And then, once again, Kaminari had come back to himself and wheezed out a laugh. There also may have been a moment when Izuku had been facing down Itaraka, formulated some kind of plan, and a feral grin had stretched across his face, and Hitoshi's inside had done a weird twist at seeing it because, yeah, he wasn't just cute. He had the potential to be fucking devious. And maybe Hitoshi found that kind of hot. Help him first, hit on him later, you irresponsible prick. Izuku won the match, but Uraraka sent him her own devious look after. That did not look nearly as good on her. And, of course, he kept up just fine with his analysis job. Still had the highest success rate of anyone Itoshi could find. He almost would have worried that Izuku was stretching himself too thin. If only Izuku weren't looking better every day. He knew what it was like to feel so far behind the starting line that it seemed impossible to catch up. His job was just to show him that it wasn't. There was just so much. Izuku was making great progress in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so they started discussing him learning to use a weapon, and that had extended into a talk about the sort of support equipment he might want to use. Tokoyami had been there that day, all three of them sitting cross-legged on the gym floor, knowing they needed to clean up and leave, and none of them being quite willing to yet. And he said it. I suppose the equipment you choose would depend on if you're planning going into underground or spotlight heroics, no? Izuku blinked. Hitoshi blinked, too. He always just sort of assumed that Izuku was going to go underground, but he was also very biased. Izuku settled his chin in his hand, brows furled deep in thought. I actually was thinking that it might be best to be a Twilight hero like you, Tokoyami. Hitoshi kept his face, carefully neutral. Izuku chewed on his lip. I think people are going to find me and try to fight me on this eventually, no matter what, so it might be best for me to do as much as I can, to prove that it's possible before I get noticed, and then start working in the spotlight once I am. Plus, Izuku heaved a long sigh, gaze going distant. It would have meant so much to me as a kid to see someone quirkless doing anything. So even if I was an underground hero, I wouldn't want to stay there forever. Hitoshi's lip quirked up at that. Prove everyone wrong would have been his motivation. But he supposed that just proved the difference between them. Well, he said slowly, I think that could work. Though that also means you're going to have to learn about PR and stuff like that. You'd have to find someone else to help with that, too. Hitoshi didn't know the first thing about it. Have you been thinking about your hero name, then? Izuku froze at that, eyes going wide for just a moment before a slow smile started to break across his face. I have some ideas. Then he laughed, a little breathless. Holy shit. This is actually happening, isn't it? Sure is. Hitoshi grinned back. Yeah, he knew that feeling too. It's late and I should be asleep, but instead I'm here recording. Y'all make sure to do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that's that's a saying, right? Do as I say, not as I do? Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I want to talk about Hitoshi finally being like, fuck, I think I'm in love. Right, the whole, like, I don't normally say this lightly, but yeah, I think I'm in love. And you know what? You and me, Hitoshi, too. I don't say it lightly. I really don't. I, I do not. I think I've only ever actually been truly in love, like, in love, two times. Um, both of those times I ended up being heartbroken. But hey, they say the third time is, is the charm. They say the, thir the first one is, is the one that, uh, it's, it's the puppy love. The second one is the one that breaks your heart. The third one is the one that stays. So, where's my third? Hello, where are you? I'm waiting for you. Where the fuck are you? But, uh, still waiting. I want to talk about... <laughs> okay, so, Hitoshi mentioned that he just loves the light in Izuku's eyes when he's talking about something that he really, really likes. Me and you both, Hitoshi. Hold up. Am I kidding, Hitoshi? Oh my god, am I kidding, Hitoshi? Huh? Oh my god. That's preposterous. Okay, but as I was saying, 
I really, really like it. My, my loves, <laughs> my two love story. Uh, okay, let's see. The first one, I think I'm gonna call them. I don't know. I don't have a nickname for them. The second one, I do have a nickname for though. Uh, Roman Empire. Roman Empire. I'll have to think of a nickname for the first one. Code names, not nickname. Code name. But uh, specifically, let's talk about Roman Empire, right? Um, this is the one that I had face to face. Roman Empire and me. Oh my god. Oh my god. My two loves happen to be both situationships. Oh my god. So slap yourself right now. Boom. Slap. You deserve better. I'm looking at you guys too over there. You deserve better. Do not settle for less. Okay? Do not settle for less. I said less really, really wrong that, that other time. We don't talk about my lisp. Okay? My lisp is shit. We don't talk about it. Um, okay, so I, I very much appreciate it too. Like, I really love seeing somebody's light, like, eyes light up when they're talking about something or just the way they're super happy or excited. Um, with anyone, exactly, like anyone, honestly. And it's just, it's amazing. I know I, I tend to mask when I'm, like, really, really happy because I flap my hands and I, and I, I act weird and, um, people don't really like it. So I just don't like that around them. And, and I just, mask it, I guess. I, like, I, I put on a little mask. A little, you know, I'm totally not wanting to squeal out of my pants. Um, but, yeah, I always love when, when people do that because it's like, oh, you really, really care about something and I, I want to see you care about something because I'm really happy that you're happy, you know, kind of thing. Um, Hitoshi has a tricky thingy with consent. Obviously, power dynamics very much. I think, though, in my opinion, right now, there isn't much of a power... Uh, disbalance, right? Obviously, in the beginning, there was a bit of a power disbalance. Obviously, with him being a hero and, and you know, being the sole protector of uh, Izuku and stuff like that. Um, it made sense. But now, Izuku has his own income, right? He's getting paid good. Just because Hitoshi is his roommate doesn't, doesn't mean anything, right? And technically speaking, Izuku has other, like, other connections other than Hitoshi to be able to become a hero, so Hitoshi doesn't even have that over him. So I really think that they're an equal footing right now. I think the only thing that might be quote-unquote controversial is the fact that Izuku is still technically a civilian while Hitoshi is still a hero, which I think is bullshit that that is what's stopping them because, like, celebrities can date normal people. Police officers can date people who are not, you know, police officers. Civilians, basically, right? I just think that the whole, oh, I'm a hero and you're a civilian, therefore we can't date, is just something that's probably, um, not, not, should not be worried about, right? Um, unless it's, like, a really big power imbalance and stuff like that, but in situations where it's like this, where it's like, okay, there does not seem to be a power balance, right? Even the fact that they're roommates, and technically speaking, Itoshi is Izuku's landlord. Izuku has enough money that he's not financially stable on that one stay, like place. If Izuku wanted to, he probably could get his own, uh, what's it called, apartment again. Considering that his first paycheck, which was on, um, on what's it called, on a on an intern income, right, was so high of a number that he'd never seen it in his whole life. He could probably get another apartment in the same neighborhood right? It's not a big deal, not a big thing, right? So I don't think that there's much of a power imbalance, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think there's a power imbalance? Do you think that it's healthy or whatever? I do understand why Hitoshi is so worried about it, given his quirk, given his past. He doesn't want to seem like that. I understand that. I know I've had significant others in the past who have had um, uh, events that have happened with them, and even just those that don't have those events and stuff like that. I just, I, I feel so inclined to ask every small little detail in every small little time because I, I, I don't, I, like, I, I'm not, I'm asexual. I don't even, I don't even do that kind of stuff, but, like, I still, you know, I, consent is really tricky with me because, like, it's like, I don't want to step on your boundaries. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I understand Hitoshi and that literally this whole note thing is proving that I, I'm gonna kin Hitoshi. All fucking bullshit. Anyways, as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep. Drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.